Welcome to another Advent of Vue challenge. This is my favorite one by far, and it's because we're going to be talking a lot less about Vue and user interfaces, and a lot more about algorithms and efficiency, one of my favorite topics to talk about, because it's so fundamental and underpins all kinds of development, not just uh, something specific to Vue, for example. We're tasked with building a secret Santa list generator. Most of the app has already been built. All we need to do is implement the final algorithm. We click on this generate list button and it's going to generate a list of uh, people. We need to have one giver who's going to give a gift and one who is going to receive it. Uh, these need to always be different. You can't be giving a gift to yourself and it needs to be randomizable as well. There are a bunch of different ways to do things like shuffle arrays. Uh, some are better than others. So we're going to take a look at an unbiased way of doing it. We're then going to see a non-optimal way of doing it. And we're going to be thinking about making this as efficient as possible. Let's go ahead now and get started. So this is boilerplate code that the project comes with. It's mostly implemented. Our only task is to implement the match people function. It receives an array of people and it needs to return an array of pairs. A person is just going to have a name and an email and a pair is just going to be uh, two people, a giver and a receiver. And there's two things we need to do here. The first is going to be randomizing the array, which is probably the most important part. And then we just need to apply a very simple transformation. As part of a transformation, we're going to ensure that the same person is not the giver or the receiver. And there's a really neat way of doing both of these things. So people have been thinking about sorting and shuffling arrays since before computers even existed. And we're actually going to use an algorithm which has been known for a very long time, uh, since 1938 actually. And it's called the fisher yates shuffle. Uh, this algorithm does predate at least what we consider to be modern computers, uh, but it's really neat. So I'm going to show you how it works, and then we're going to see a really cool way to implement it in JavaScript. So here we have an array of five letters which says Elvis, and the goal is to randomize this to say something different. We're going to go through and apply a very simple algorithm to randomize it. It basically goes something like this. Firstly, we need to determine the length of our array, which is going to be five. We're then going to pick a random number between one and five, uh, kind of like rolling a dice. And depending on that result, we're going to apply a transformation. So in the case of the first iteration, we're going to roll a dice from one to five. And let's say we rolled a five. This result is the same as the last index, the fifth index. So we actually don't do anything and we proceed to the next iteration. Uh, you can see S has remained the same. We're then going to roll this proverbial dice again between one and four this time. So we're iterating backwards. And in this case, let's say we rolled a one. If we did roll a one, that means we're going to swap the fourth element with the first element. So in this case, the I and the E are going to swap. We're then going to proceed to the next, uh, the next iteration. We're going to do the same thing again. Uh, in this case, let's say we rolled a three. That means we're not going to do anything because three is uh, equal to three. So we move on. We then do the same thing for the second one, one and two. And let's say we ended up swapping these and now we're done. We have a randomized array. As long as your random number is unbiased, your shuffle is also going to be unbiased, which is the goal of this random number generator. So this is a pretty neat algorithm. Uh, when they first proposed it, they just used uh, a literal sheet of paper with lots of random numbers on it. But luckily we have modern computers, which are going to give us a random number with very little effort. Let's go ahead now and see how we can implement this. And the implementation is actually going to be pretty slick. So the first thing we're going to do is create our new function. I'm actually going to call it Fisher Yates because that is the name of the sorting algorithm. I'd like to make it generic just to make sure it works with any kind of array. And now we need to go ahead and implement this. So the first thing we need is that variable which is going to be decreasing each iteration. And I'm going to call it M. It's going to be equal to array.length. We're then just going to loop over this until M is zero, which means we've iterated through the entire array. The first thing we need to do is create a random number. So I'm just going to go ahead and create that one. Let's call it I. And that's going to be equal to math.floor. We're going to round down. We're then going to go ahead and grab a random number, which is usually going to be between 0 and 1. I want it to be between 0 and 4. So I'm just going to go ahead and multiply it by m. And we're going to subtract 1. Since m is going to start at 5, but arrays are going to be 0 indexed, we want a number between 0 and 4. So now we're going to get a number between 0 and 4. Finally, we just need to go ahead and do that switch if the numbers are not equal. So in this case, we need to switch the fifth element with potentially one of the other elements. Uh, we don't actually need a conditional here. I'm going to tell you why afterwards. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and implement this. Since we're switching two elements, we need a temporary element. I'm going to create one here. We're just going to say array and grab M. 
I'm then going to reassign that one. So const or array m is just going to be equal to my new element, which is going to be array of i. That's my random number. Finally, we can go ahead and now assign array i, and that's just going to be equal to temp. We just did the uh, classic way of switching two elements in an array. Finally, we're going to return our array down here. And that's actually all we need to do. Uh, I would like to write a test for this, but it's actually surprisingly difficult to test this. Uh, the reason this is difficult to test is math.random is truly random. Uh, there's not really any way to seed this like some other programming languages. We could go ahead and set something up, uh, but it's quite a bit of effort and it's quite involved. Uh, so for the purpose of this particular lecture, I'm just going to go ahead and test it in my console. There's a pretty neat way of testing this. What I'm going to do is run mpx ts node, and that's going to give me a REPL. I'm using ESM because I'm using uh, ESM syntax, and I'm using transpile only just to ignore any potential typing errors uh, that I might have in my application. The next thing I'm going to do is import my algorithm. Uh, just going to go ahead and do that. Now we can go ahead and call Fisher Yates and just pass in our elements. I'm going to use one, two, and three. And we can see we got a random number, or random array, three, two, and one. I'm just going to run this a bunch more times uh, and see what other elements we're going to get. I'm expecting to see all three permutations eventually. We now have 132, 321, and 231. So I have managed to get all the different uh, potential random elements. What I haven't got is the exact same thing that I put in. If I run this enough times, you might expect to get that. And there we did, we ended up getting it. Uh, we did randomize it, it just happened that the random came back exactly the same. And that's kind of expected uh, at least some of the time with this algorithm. So there is a kind of a trick here. When I explained this earlier, I talked about conditionals. If the number is different, we're going to swap them over. And we've actually got that, it's just not that obvious. What's happening here is i can potentially be equal to uh, the new value of m. So maybe i ends up as four and m was already four. That means we're just going to end up doing a, a pointless swap. We're going to swap the element with itself. Uh, this is not really necessary, but it sure is a simple way to implement this. Just to show you how that works, I'm going to actually go ahead and do a console log and just to prove exactly what is happening here. I'm going to log both my i and my m value. Finally, let's go ahead and reset our REPL. I'm just going to re-import that and run this a bunch of times. So you can see we actually got it this time, two and two. Uh, so we just basically swapped the same element with itself. We then did the same thing two more times. Uh, we got a different number these two times, so we ended up with a random array. Either way, this is now working, and this is a good way to create a random array. Uh, towards the end, I'm going to show you the author's final solution, which actually has a, a non-optimal way or a non-ideal way of randomizing an array. And I'll tell you why it is not ideal as well. Uh, for now, we're going to proceed and finish solving this problem. So we've successfully solved the first part, which is going to be randomizing the array. Uh, the next thing we need to do is match up people and make sure we're never giving it to the, uh, the same person is never giving a gift to themselves. There's actually another really neat way of doing this as well. So let's say your array is something like this, one, two, three, four, five. To ensure that we never have the same person giving a gift to themselves, all we need to do is match them up in a linear fashion. So one would give to two, two gives to three, three gives to four, four gives to five, and then five would give to one. And that way you're guaranteed to never be giving a gift to yourself. Of course, the array is random, so it's going to be different every single time. And there's a really nice way of implementing this as well using map and the little known third argument to map. I'm going to go ahead and delete both of these because we don't need them. I'm just going to go ahead and say return. Uh, we're going to create our new random array. So I'm just going to call that one array, which is going to be equal to uh, Fisher Yates passing in people. Finally, we're going to say return array dot map. And this takes three uh, arguments. The first is going to be the element, so I, I'm going to call the second one the index, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And the third one is actually going to be a copy of the original array. So I'm going to call that one A. This is going to be useful to access the person we're giving the element to, or the gift to. I'm now going to go ahead and say return. We're going to give the giver and the receiver. So the giver is just going to be the current index. So I'm just going to say I. The next one is going to be the receiver. So we can just go ahead and say receiver is going to be equal to the array index plus one, and that's going to grab the, the next one. We do have a bug here, clearly. If we get to the end, we need to loop around and make sure we're giving it to the first person. So if this doesn't exist, we can just go ahead and say IA and pass in at zero. And that's going to give us the start of the array. And this is actually all we need to do. The whole solution is a single uh, expression. If you wanted to be even more minimal, we could just go ahead and inline this as well and just say return Fisher Yates people.map. And that's all we need to do. 
If everything went according to plan, this should actually be working. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Uh, hopefully I did everything correctly. It sure would be nice if it worked first try. I'm going to go ahead and hit generate. And that does look like it's working correctly to me. I can randomize this a bunch more times and we're not getting any duplicates. So everything is working as expected. Uh, I'm very happy with this solution. It's very simple and it's very uh, minimal. I'm now going to show you the author's proposed solution, which in my opinion is not quite as good, uh, but it's not exactly obvious why. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. There's a few different things going on here. He's got some utility functions, which is okay, I guess, uh, not really a problem there. But the problem is actually very subtle, it's sort. So there's a couple of things going on here. Uh, one thing that's important to remember with JavaScript is sort is actually going to mutate this object. So you don't even need to do this assignment. Uh, this is not what you would expect at all, which is exactly why the author did this assignment. Uh, but this does mutate the array, a source of many, many bugs. So you need to be careful with that. Uh, the actual problem is not exactly that you're using sort, but it's how we're using sort. Uh, this is the kind of code that GitHub Copilot tends to write. It's a classic copy paste from Stack Overflow to sort out an array. But it turns out this is actually not going to give you an unbiased distribution. Uh, you can go and research this a little bit more, but uh, someone created this little benchmark here. He ran the same sort using the same algorithm, uh, this math.random minus half, 40,000 times. And then he mapped out the distribution. And it turns out this is not unbiased. This is heavily biased to stay in the starting position. So your, your array is not going to be truly unbiased and random. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why. Apparently, if you read the ECMAScript uh, implementation, you can learn exactly why this is the case. Uh, math random is random, but sort is not really intended to do a random sort. It's intended to put things in a specific order. And for some reason, there's a bias uh, when you use sort to try and create a randomly generated array. Uh, so definitely worth being aware of. In the vast majority of cases, this doesn't really matter, but it is good to kind of be aware of these subtleties if you really are generating something that needs to be random, because uh, you definitely don't want to have an unbiased random number generator, or sorry, a biased random number generator. Either way, uh, that is just a kind of side note. The rest of the solution is also not the most optimal. I think it's fine because it's nice and clear and it's uh, documented very well, but you can see he's doing quite a lot of for loops. We have a for each here, so we're looping over people once. We're then loop looping over it again with find, which has to check every element potentially for the worst case. Our filter has to check every element to filter. And then we're doing another find index, which also worst case is going to check every single element. So we're actually looping over the array four times here, which is uh, not really ideal. In this solution, we only had to loop over it twice. We looped over it once for the sorting algorithm or the, the randomizing algorithm, which is unavoidable. And then we looped over it again to sort them out. So uh, that's also unavoidable. I believe this is optimal. There might be some improvement somewhere, but I think it's pretty close. There is, is actually one more very subtle optimization we can do, however, and it's to do with the Fisher-Yates implementation. This original implementation that I described using this image uh, was before we had modern computers. Uh, there's actually a more slightly optimal way if you're using a modern computer, which is called a Durston field shuffle. Uh, you can go ahead and Google this one as well. It's pretty interesting, but uh, this is optimal specifically because of how CPUs generate random numbers, or at least that is my understanding. Either way, definitely check out this. And if you're really interested, go and Google about this sort uh, problem as well. The one we talked about over here. Uh, if you just Google this on Stack Overflow, you can probably find a pretty thorough discussion about it. Either way, that brings me to the end of my favorite advent of view challenge so far, and I will see you in the next video.